That's good. Funky, a little funky today. Well, hey, uh, my name is Tim Smith. And I'm Jake Standish. And this is IT Weekly number 13. Lucky. Lucky number 13. Yeah. Well, well, you know what? It's uh, it's good to be with you guys. We're really excited. Uh, I don't know for CMS. I do know for CMS. You've got about four more days of full teaching ahead of you, and we're uh, really excited about that, and then a couple work days, Yeah. and then the summer's here. So we've got some exciting things we hope to show to you that will uh, help you be encouraged over the summer. But first, uh, I think we... Yeah. we we actually ran into a couple of teachers we today. In. We saw some an exchange happen here, just kind of dialogue yeah. about some of their frustrations, and yeah. maybe you uh, experience this too. So let's take a look at that. Take a look at that. Oh, hey. Hey there. Hey, I'm, you know, just having some coffee, getting some my little break That's here. It's a planning period. We need to relax. Yeah, but you you throw your paper down. I'm going to perceive. Well, well Tim, what's going on? You're frustrated. I am. Uh, my same old stuff or something new. My students have no creative outlet to write. I, they, I need them blogging. You want your students to blog. I do. I, my students, you know, uh, you, they uh, need to develop that, that digital presence. You well know that I, I believe many of us here at your school at CMS would love to have students blogging. I just don't. Well, your school at CMS is an important place for many students, and you know we we're a premier school here at CMS. I think blogging would be a good thing. I'm not really sure who we should bring that up to, and I have my doubts that we're the first people to think about our students blogging. I think. Well, I know I, students I, I, blog in every other district. Every other district. That's a little exaggeratory, don't you think? No, every other district. The county over. Uh, the county over. <laughs> All right, every other district, yes. the county. Other. Well, you know, I think that's important. I think it's definitely something we should look into. I know I've been frustrated about students not being able to blog. I've talked to many of our teachers. They all would like to have this outlet of writing. We understand writing, writing online. I think I'm just as frustrated. Frankly, I'm tired of reading the handwriting. <laughs> you can't read my handwriting, so I know you can't read their handwriting. Exactly. Oh, I don't know what we're going to do about it, man. I don't, I don't know, man. Those guys look pretty defeated. Yes, they did. Seemed, sounded frustrated. You know, I've heard that conversation multiple times. So have I. And I am excited to say that uh, we've been working as a district uh, behind the scenes to try to get some option for student blogging. So what do we got? We have Kid Blog. Kid Blog. It seems safe and simple blog for your students, if I was yes. to read the screen and what it says. That, that is exactly what it says. So kidblog.org will get you there. Correct. And um, it is open in the district, so you can log into it at school. It is a free blogging service that you can establish with your students, and yep. it will not be filtered. It, you will be able to blog. So you, this is the first yeah. site that you are allowed to blog with in CMS. And, uh, and when we say it won't be filtered, we, we hope you will be the filter of your students, and uh, you will be able yes. to, to work with them. And, uh, you know, I also wanted to say, I forget what else I wanted to say. So let's go on. Okay. So once you get to Kid Blog, you'll see that uh, your dashboard um, has talks about the uh, what's been published and um, if you've done any kind of blogging it's going to look very familiar and that's the point you, yes. you've got where you can write a new post you can review posts of other people in your yeah. class. and that's that's where this is blogging in a classroom where right. it has the ability for the teacher to review approve or reject and we'll look at that in the, any in particular a, post correct yes. we'll look at that in a, in a second there uh, it doesn't take too long to sign up. You sign up, you're able to add students, and we'll talk about those in a few minutes. And uh, th it's just very simple, straight to the point, uh, a great way to get students writing. I mean, that's that was one of our purposes. It was like with that video in the front, teachers have been asking and asking, can we get students to blog? I know what I was going to say. I know there's other blogging software out there, and there's there's a whole lot of opportunities for students to write. And you know we can't offer them all, no. and we've got to be exactly. able to focus and get one. And so, uh, Kid Blog, its purpose is safe blogging for students, and so that's why we brought it. Also, I also wanted to bring up. I know it's one of those times. It's near the end of the year where it's like, why are you bringing this to us now? Well, so you can think about how you want to apply it in the fall. I mean, yeah. 
let's be honest. You know, you got two months off easily, and yeah, you're gonna yeah, you're ten, gonna ten take a break. Yep. You're gonna enjoy yourself, but as a teacher, you always got what am I gonna plan for next year? What what yes. what's it gonna be like? How am I gonna do it differently? Yes. So we want to share you some exciting things you can use for next year, for next year. right now. So it's not, oh, in August, by the way, we got kid blog, and two days from now you should be using it. So you That's can plan ahead kid. right now to say, kid blog is open, kid blog is something you can play with all summer long, you can practice with it, you can try uploading some students, all sorts of different activities. You can even start thinking about an activity a week, uh, whatever subject you teach, if you want your students to write about it online in a safe, protected place, you can start to implement kid blog into your teacher planning. Exactly. And that's kind of and, the goal. And now we are, we're, we're not saying that you have to use blogging oh, no. either. No. Uh, if it's something you want to use in your classroom, if it's something that you think that is a good fit for your teaching, share it out with the, uh, all the teachers in your you school. You need to get this out there because a lot of teachers have been asking about this and this is just one avenue, one way that we share with you to say, please, uh, pass it on to your teachers. Definitely. Yeah. But it no, doesn't have to be used. This is something we do like to use. We are not telling you you have to use it. Correct. All right, so uh, creating users. It can be pretty simple. I mean, you can create individual users, but more likely than not, the best way is to have a class list. Yes, which you can get off of NCYs. Uh, it's easy to copy and paste information and uh, into a spreadsheet. So you, to uh, take a class list, it has to be in a comma-separated value format. Or is that what CSV stands CSV for? CSV stands Woo! for comma-separated value. Easiest way to get a comma-separated value or CSV file through Excel. is using Excel. Yeah. And you can just save as CSV instead of Excel and yeah, it's easy. So you don't have to type in every student. You also get to make different classes if you want. So if you are an upper grade teacher or if you switch classes in uh, some of your upper grades, if you teach two groups of writing or whatever it may be, or however you want to separate them, you can have as many different types of blog groups that you want as a teacher. So again, it's definitely designed for teaching, which is which is really nice. Yeah. The settings, Jake mentioned the settings a little bit earlier. The settings can be very strict in regards to what is allowed through, that you as the teacher sees every single blog post, every single comment, and some of you may want to do it that strict. Others may want to be a little bit open, but this is your responsibility as the right. teacher. Yeah, you know, it's getting the students to do this appropriately is of course our, our aim here and yeah there are some risks that are at play here when you have students doing things digitally that could be accessed by anyone that is an option in blogging here but I would I think we would recommend that you keep the post just to your class at first yeah and make sure that you're approving the blogs and gradually open it up perhaps uh, you know I saw a great presentation yesterday and one of the presenters said something. He said, what do you say? Teach kids to cross the street. Don't ban cars. I right? teach. That's, that makes I, sense. We, we don't want to ban all cars and modes of transportation because a kid could get hit while crossing the street. No, we we teach, teach them, them how to cross the street appropriately. We teach them how to blog appropriately and create that digital yeah. presence that not just their friends on Facebook are seeing, but right potential employers or college admissions we'll personnel. See. I mean, it's important. And uh, in the future with uh, Kid Blog and, and even at the um, CMS instructional conference that we're going to be having in August, there's going to be some teaching on Kid Blog and some of these uh, activities mm -hmm. uh, to discuss and come up with great ways. This is an excellent opportunity for students to practice correct writing skills. Exactly. So let your mind go. Do some research on blogging with students. Uh, and enjoy that this summer, knowing that Kid Blog is open and available. You know, we've got about a minute left, and we wanted to share, uh, on a personal level, I guess, a professional level, uh, a way to, I don't know, I like to reflect in writing. It's just kind of who I am. Me too. And uh, one of the sites that we like to use is called uh, Posterous. I, I like to call it Posterous, but you would be incorrect, so don't follow. And what follow do you do with, with this? It's a blog. So, so you, you like posters because you post the blog? I like posters because yeah, okay. I send up posts to my posters. Sense, but. but the owners call it posters, so we should too. So uh, it's posters, and it's quick, it's simple, it's easy, and it's free. Uh, again, this is for your own professional development. This has nothing to do with your students, um, but it has to do with you as an individual. 
Yeah, so if you want to do your own blogging, um, then Postris is a, a nice Postris. site. Postris is a nice site for this. Uh, it's not the approved one that that's is moved. accessible. I don't even think it's open in CMS, to be right. honest. But uh, the point is, it is easy to use. And, Correct. And, and, to be, and to be a reflective person upon your practices. Be smart in what you uh, decide to blog, what you decide to post. Obviously, don't post about certain students and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. be, very, uh, be very smart about what you're blogging. Um, you know, we blog professionally about things that have to do with our profession, right. tools and websites and ideas that come into our head. Uh, we don't talk about, I don't talk about Jake's personal issues. Well, that's good. I don't talk about your ponytail, man. Uh, well, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> that's good. But thinking about that, you, if you're wondering, well, what is appropriate to write? There are many bloggers out there in education that you could follow and yeah. see how how they're writing, what things they're writing about, and it's it's good practice. Indeed, so indeed. One thing in there and look. One thing we're going to work on this summer is uh, well, the nice thing about Posturus is you could blog in a in a group. And so we're, we're going to be working on that and see how that kind of works. So that's kind of, kind of new for us. We're, we're trying to expand our professional horizons, exactly. and that's why we offer this concept. So keep those two things in mind uh, with your students using KidBlog. Uh, think about it all summer or not, but just realize you have the opportunity in August to start preparing students to write online. And come to the IT conference. Yep, and IT conference. And learn more about that and many other things that are available to us in this district. Um, we have some very good presenters joining us for that. So uh, hope to see you there. Good time.